And welcome to another AV Nation special. I'm your host, George Tucker, and today we are live from Middle Atlantic in Fairfield, New Jersey. Not Connecticut, like I told my wife earlier. <laughs> but we are here celebrating AV Month. If you remember, maybe you thought it was AV Week, but Infocom has increased it to a full 30 days. And Middle Atlantic has been doing a lot of celebrating for this. And joining me today to talk about some of that is Becky Villarreal. You know her from many of our shows and probably from the Infocom when you see her at the booth. But good to see you. Good to see you too, George. All right. So you guys have been doing a lot of stuff this month. We have. So we decided to take advantage of the month as a whole since it is a full month. And um, what we've done is uh, basically a webinar a week leading up to our AV Academy event that we're having here. So the whole idea is just in the spirit of um, supporting education in the industry um, because we think that that's going to be a crucial piece to the, the, the continued success of the industry. So uh, again, we did a webinar a week leading up to this event and we had four classes here today, four sessions here today for uh, everybody who joined us. And um, we did a couple other things too. We had a nice factory tour in the middle of the day so people could kind of get an idea about what we do here. Um, but um, the, the whole program we were doing is kind of a, a, a earn your credits challenge. So our AV challenge was um, earning seven credits in 31 days. And if you attended every webinar and came here today or, or participated online, you have seven credits towards your CTS renewal. Yeah, and that's always an important stuff to get because you need to get those. You don't want to take the test again. Trust me on that. <laughs> Um, although it's probably helpful at least every so often. Uh, so you, yeah, you've had 30 days of webinars, really well attended, uh, some really good stuff. And today live, we were tweeting out some of the stuff. Yeah. Uh, Jay, I believe his name is Jay, the AV, AV app guy, the app guy, I can't remember. <laughs> Jay, the, his, yeah, his Twitter handle is at Jay, the app guy. There you go. Um, he is um, an application specialist here at Middle Atlantic. He is our go-to rack guy. So if you know Middle Atlantic, you know um, racks are kind of our thing. So, um, Give me so, cracks. Sometimes. Oh, a few, right? I'm not sure. Yeah. You missed the factory tour, so you didn't see. I know, I know. And Tim got to see there. the factory tour a couple of months ago, and I'm really jealous now. He did. Yeah, I got lost on the way here, so, you know. <laughs> you could probably get lost out there if you didn't have a guide on our factory tour. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, it's huge. If, if anyone has not seen this facility, and you can look it up, it is an enormous facility, and there's lots going on. Stuff that. I wanted to go around with a periscope or a Meerkat, and I was told no. So uh, sorry. Yeah, well, you know. Well, you know, we we still want to keep some things a, a, <laughs> a little bit private, yeah. but um, yeah, we have about um, four hundred and twenty thousand square feet of manufacturing space and and warehouse space out here. So we ship a lot of product uh, out of our warehouse here. So that's kind of um, all that uh, all that space. Kind of yeah, and I, I noticed that the uh, the crowd that was here today skewed a little bit older male, but it was quite diverse. I mean, it's our industry, yeah, of um, course, yeah. but you know, it is something to say AV month. Part of the par promotion was to get more of the young people involved, more of that. I mean, what do you see as a potential for getting out there and bringing more of the students in? Well, I, and, and not only that, but like we would love to be able to have more female engineers mm. join us, more of the, the women of the AV industry participate too. Um, you know, it's hard. I, I think it, this was our first year doing this, so it was it was a great year to learn a lot. I think um, there's probably a lot we can do a little bit differently as far as promotion next year. So, you know, not just with the, the content itself, but, you know, there's, there's always an opportunity to work on maybe um, a real... Um, uh, entry level track maybe mm. and uh, there who knows I mean we could put something together that would speak to vo local vote tech schools that yeah. might be interested in seeing you know how do I put these principles into into action or how do some people put these principles into action so mm. I think that's an opportunity but just um, yeah I don't know it's, I think well, it's, no, it's, it's, it's a topic yeah it's a yeah. topic because even the guys that were in the class today that we were we were joining in were very interested in what was going on and some of it like with Jay seemed like oh yeah I have to do heat Evacuation. I know that. I know. And then he said something about hot spots building up, and I was like, "I've I, okay. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't thought about it." Yeah. And backtracking on to say maybe even younger people, there's a whole set of math and getting that accomplishment. Saying, "We've taught you. Here's a rack. You've done it. 
Absolutely. This is well, a cool but, thing. but even but you, you know, you, you bring up a really great point, though. Um, no matter how advanced you are in your career, there's always something to be said for going back to the basics. And there are a lot of basics that maybe are, um, you know, we, we just get so accustomed to our ways that we're not thinking about maybe little opportunities to be just a little more efficient, for instance. So, you know, we hope that with a training like this, even though we had a lot of people who were um, with really a, um, advanced experience that um, there's still an opportunity to kind of just revisit what some of those, again, some of those, those basics are. Mm. Figure out how to do your job maybe a little bit differently, a little bit better. Yeah, you know, I mean, we can always learn. I mean, that's some, one of the things that I heard some of the guys out here talking about was, you know, there's never a bad thing to go back and we look at how you do things. Even if you've known 90% of it, that 1% information that's gained is, is always a wonderful thing. And that's, that's whole, this whole month. Yes. I mean, we used to cram it into a week. It was all balloons and celebrations mm -hmm. and funny activities, and those were great. And it was a nice excitement, but nothing beats what's going on like when you're really learning hands-on and doing stuff. I mean, it's, it's well, an absolutely. awesome experience. And, and there's something to be said for the opportunity to get people together to network, too. Mm. So you might be sitting next to somebody who, I mean, we have a couple of people who flew in here from the West Coast even for this. So, you know, maybe they've got tips and tricks for doing things a little bit differently that, that some of our New, New Jersey, you know, integrated mm. partners are doing. So, um, again, there's always, you never know. I mean, there's always opportunity for that, that networking right. and, and, and who knows, maybe there's uh, potential like um, work relationships that could yeah. spring out of that too. Well, yeah, it's all it's all networking these days, right? I mean, Always, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all networking. But yeah. um, you know, and to to that end, we just saw Pitsy Jaffe come by. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll be on later to talk with us a little bit about this. But that she is here mm -hmm. is a remarkable thing because you guys have done a really good effort of making AV Month work. Uh, I you. know I was following it. <laughs> I know I thought it was pretty cool. And you. and you know, thirty days seems like a lot. But it's the little things that matter, as you said. It's yeah. little incremental. Here's the trading. Here's the things you need to know, and you build it up. And I, I thought that was pretty darn cool. Well, and we again we tried to space it out a little bit so that it wasn't all you know crammed into one thing. But mm. um, we what we tried to do too is make this something that was accessible even for the people who couldn't be here in person today. So every class that we had today, we um, we live streamed via WebEx. So um, even those people had an opportunity to, um, to to learn what was learned here in the room. Mm -hmm. um, but if they all they have to do is just answer a short um, uh, quiz and they could earn the same amount of credits right. that somebody here in person. The quiz, too. make sure you were paying attention. No, <laughs> no snoozing, no snoozing. You got to catch up. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the web, the webinar was great. And uh, where, where would they be able to find all of those webinars and these today? I think they what another day or so they'll be up. Where could they find those? Uh, we have a, on our on the middleatlantic.com website. Um, we have a module under our, our resources mm -hmm. um, area that talks about industry certified trainings. Okay. And so um, we I can't promise that this, that that's where it's going to be, but it's probably where those links would land because it just. Yeah. It just I'm makes sure you'll be tweeting it out once so, they're once they're. Oh, absolutely. Running, yeah, so yeah, we'll all absolutely. know more about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, cool. I mean, there's a great uh, activity. You can't see all of it back here, guys, because off to this side, there's a lot of people gathered around the food and the beer. So that's where they're all congregating at the moment. But it was well packed, even with some of the photos I just sent earlier. That's a, That was a well stocked, uh, well loaded, as I said, uh, web uh, seminar. Yeah, we, a lot so of people. we were we were really happy with the turnout, and yeah, I think it just speaks to you know people want you know to further their education. Um, there are even you know new technologies that keep popping up that um, you know that Joe Cornwall, he's our technology evangelist. He uh, he did two of the classes today, and um, you know he's the the content he provides is always really cutting edge. Yeah. Um, he's going to come and talk to you in a little bit, also. Yes, yeah, no, I look forward to that as well. Well, he's a very dynamic personality. A lot of. Uh, Sorry, you somebody. No, no, somebody just came in. Bill is here. He said he wasn't going to be here. I want to get him on as well to get his thoughts. Um, but uh, sorry, he was waving at me before, and now now he disappeared. Of course he did. I know who it was. Um, what's next for you guys, though? What's next now? AV month has ended. We're gearing up for a few shows coming when. Well, I think the next big one for us is uh, ISE. So okay. it's, it, you know, a little bit into the new year. In Amsterdam. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I don't get to go. You don't so. get to go? I, oh, well, no. I didn't ask to go, quite honestly. But um, yeah, there, there are a ton of people who, who do happen to, to yeah. get it. Well, that's cool. Lily, let me let me you spin off. Enjoy some of the food okay, and, and yeah. have some fun. Come back go in a little wrangle, bit. Wrangle more yeah, wrangle some people. Yeah. Well, All thank right. you very much. I'll be back. All right. I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right. Bye.
now. Hey, Becky, how are you? And of course, you? he's here, but he didn't bring a beer or anything. No, I Look didn't. I, 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 I literally came here directly from uh, from the job site. So yes, you lied to me. You said you weren't coming, darling. Well, that's because I was currently making GCs cry. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're <laughs> I just want to add, they're rare and they're delicious. <laughs> So uh, on top of that, the other fun one we had was um, without without uh, going too far down the rabbit hole. Um, it's always great when you specify out the uh, cable schedule, and then when you go to go do a room check, it turns out oh yeah, uh, we were supposed to pull um, the uh, Crestnet or you know Axlink uh, cable and everything, and this is for a wireless touch panel. Oh yeah, network cable. I'm going. No, I'm just going to pull the cable myself because the last thing. You well, you know, that's one of the things they did cover in one of these seminars today was how to properly pull stuff and the checklist and remembering what funny. goes there. You know, sometimes you forget stuff. Indeed, actually, uh, that's a funny conversation I've been having with uh, Mr. Mario Maltese and the fact that um, just a couple of weeks ago uh, we were actually at uh, CCUMC, which is Collegiate Consortium of University and Media Centers. Yes, I can never remember that. That's damn good that you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gotten drilled into my head enough times. I just know that they're at CCMUC. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. I have, I had to present, so believe me, I had to remember that that acronym. Man, I and I used to work for the DoD, and I had, I had less acronyms to deal with. But anyway, um, the nice thing was uh, when, when I was talking with Mario, Mario was like, "Oh yeah, no, here's an actual. You know, he was actually showing me through how the checklist goes through, and and he 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 told me he's like, yeah, we've had uh, job sites where there's been a zero a zero punch list." Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, zero item punch list. I'm going. That's, that's what's that internet mo uh, the, that's the a, shorthand? That's a unicorn. That's a yeah. unicorn. That don't that, that don't <laughs> exist as far as I've I've known. I, I mean, it's funny because I mentioned earlier that Betsy Jaffe is going to be here, uh, and that um, you know one of the things that we talked about at the last info comment and at uh, ISC was Apex. Ah. Which is the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, guys, you if you're the GC, you need to be checking off a list. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. You know, and that, oh, it's amazing to me how many people don't do it. It's the thing that drives me up uh, up the up the wall is the fact that the architect goes and says, "Oh no, we've got it handled." And I go, "Really? Did you guys think about X, Y, or Z?" And my personal favorite has been, um, and it's really funny. We're talking about. I'm sure you guys have talked about furniture or how. Not yet. We haven't gotten into all the oh, all right. Legrand right. combination yet, but. but but the, the thing that I had a good laugh about is the fact that the architects always have a specific look in mind. And for them, it's it's going to be elegant and it has to have this specific shiny look. And I look at it and I go, where's the cable? Where's the yeah. cable raceway? How are you going to get it from point A to point B? It's magic. B? Oh, 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 we're just going to do it wireless. I go, <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 as I say, so, yeah, it's all wireless. I go, which wireless? Because this is actually just go veering off for something for a second. Uh, we actually had some folks uh, who were demoing a product with us in which they could do uh, wireless HD SDI. I went, oh, cool. I said, uh, you know, are we talking like uh, RF? Are we talking Wi-Fi? What is it? And they went, oh, well, it's, it's just wireless. You don't really have to worry about it. And I went, give me the manual. <laughs> and uh, the fun one it ended up turning out was the fact that they used uh, unregistered uh, 5 gigahertz. So it's an active frequency seek mm -hmm. seeker. And it was pretty much 10 megahertz off from every uh, Cisco wireless access point in the building. I'm like, oh yeah, that'll work great, guys. No problem. I can't see exact. I can't see why that would uh, cause any kind of drop off. Not one bit whatsoever. Well, you've been on this for a little while, I think, because you did this on EdTech as well, didn't you? Have a little bit of a rant about furniture and architects. That too. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 also, it's also because uh, our architect uh, just tends to um, go and say, oh no, no, we got it. And I go, no, you don't. You didn't even do. This is th this was the fun one that I. I I do have photos of this, and I promise it's there. Um, they may have put a, uh, a supply uh, a supply uh, uh, vent uh, right in front of the screen, and they they said, "Well, you guys have tab tension. That works, right?" I go, "Yeah, yeah, sure. I know nothing. I've only been doing this for ten plus years. Man. Whatever." So I'm sorry. Once again, well, no, no, no. I got you on a rant. I asked for it, so there you go. <laughs> um, but that being said. You, do, you know, they did a session on BYOD. Hey, look, I said it right, not yes. BYOB. Can yes. you imagine? Oh, indeed. Nobody drinks. Um, but do you guys deal with that on your yes. locations? And uh, how are you dealing with it? They went into an extensive okay. issue of security and so access. This is, so this is actually a good. This is actually one of the things that we, we we've we've talked about in, in the past. And um, I can say this: we're actually going forward with um, a specific manufacturer because we actually talked with them and. And we said, listen, our our IT guys are very security or security oriented. They literally just say, give us what the TCP ports are and what the UDP ports are, and we'll we'll be we'll be happy. And hello, Betsy. And um, 
we are going for, we are going forward with these things. I think we're still piloting like four or five, and then okay. it's going to balloon from there. But um, that's yeah, good. let me. You want to bring yeah. bring you on? Yeah. So I can. I can yeah. Here, let me uh, let me yeah. bring you up. There you go. So you're there, Betsy. Good to see you. Good to see you too, George. Yeah. It's great. Yes, it's been it's been a while. Was it ISE? I think it was the last time you and I uh, saw oh, each other. Oh wow. That's yeah. yours, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Um. So what is going on with you? Welcome to New Jersey. Oh, thank you. Well, um, we wanted to come out and support this AV Month event, this great event that No Atlantic is putting on. And, mm. um, really excited to see so many people here earning their renewal units. Yes, indeed. And um, having a good time and celebrating the industry. Yeah, well, no, I, when, Betsy, I bet, when Rebecca told me that you were coming, it was quite the thing. I was like, all right, well, that's important. No. We got a big wig here. We yes. like that. We like big wigs. Please. You know, we had to tease a special guest the whole week. <laughs> we knew it. Can't well, confirm. We're thrilled to be here. And um, it's not just me. I brought Mandy Beckner, our yes. new vice president of learning as well. Um, she's here um, kind of touring around. Um, it's been her big dream for a long time to tour the facility here. So yeah. getting her geek on today. Yes, yeah, see, and I missed it twice now. I've missed, I missed, the, I've missed the tour twice now. Tim's got one up on me now. I'm like, no, I, I, I got to see this. I, I, may, I may have come, come by uh, on my own at one point and, uh, and had my own uh, private. But then again, I have uh, I have the neighbor. I have the uh, what's called the neighbor rule. Literally, like I work at William Patterson, which is about 15 minutes that way. You can slingshot at it, yeah. Pretty much. So it's it's nice so, having this in like this in the backyard. Tell me, Betsy, it went from a week, AV week, to AV months. Tim kind of thinks it's because we stole the name, but <laughs> you had to differentiate yourself. But why the expansion to a month? Well, what we were finding was we were hearing from a lot of our members, like I'm putting together an event, but the special guest or the speaker or um, some type of timing with the school doesn't work within that week. Right. But it would still be within like two weeks of AV week. And we said, well, why don't we expand it to a month? Plenty of industries do that. Mm -hmm. um, and this month, Infocom's really been doing lots of outreach to members. Um, we just got back from the Simcoe tour. Um, I was in New York, and also before that, Boston. Um, my colleague Brad Grimes was up with Stampede in Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, we've had our shows in Dubai, and we're just finishing our show in Russia mm -hmm. um, right now. So, by doing extending it to a month, there's so much more that everybody can do. And you can be inclusive of other shows and other things. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, education seems to be the key component. Uh, when AV Week was AV Week, it was a lot of frivolity and fun. Um, but now it seems to be a little more serious. There's still the fun. There's still a lot of attention to that. But I th and I think that's a good thing. I think that actually worked to your advantage that people went, okay, we have time to actually establish some kind of learning. Yeah, I mean, I think it should be both about learning and fun. Hmm. You know, if you want to bring new people into the industry, this is a great time to do outreach to students, um, to go out in your community. A lot of colleges and universities use this as a time to right. reach out to their their AV volunteers <laughs> and um, try to get them trained up more or teach people how to take advantage of services. So, you know, we think both are great, um, but it's really valuable to the whole industry when renewal units are made available mm -hmm. to people. People always want to flock to it and just better the industry. It keeps the industry front of mind, and that's really what it's about. Yeah, and you mentioned and, um, I, to, to, uh, I'm sorry, let me get my thoughts straight. In adjacent to that, we did um, the science festival last year. You guys are still involved with that? Yes, um, it's an every other year event. Right. So we're going to be a major sponsor again next year. Cool. This year has been the off year, but we still haven't taken a step back. We're the sponsor of the Nifty 50 again. Oh, yes. Um, which is the program that brings um, um, high level scientists and um, engineers into classrooms talking mm -hmm. about STEM careers. And so we've been doing that in the off year. We also sponsored the traveling festival, the science and engineering festival okay. that stopped at the Boy Scout Jamboree and oh. some other major events along the way. Oh, and so it's been a great time. Is that where they have it, uh, like Fort A.P. Hill or anything down in Virginia? Or um, yeah, um, there's a few different stops that they make, and so that's just one of them along the way, and um, it's a great opportunity, and we're going to be doing it again full force um, next year. Yeah, I know, because one of the things that people have been asking about is like getting the young guys into it. I mean, I know as a young guy, I fell into it, but I fell into it from sort of dilatorious manner because I was doing rock and roll and doing tours and said, ah, I should probably get my learn on and do this right, and then it fell into doing installations, because you, know, you do a venue, then you do on... Uh, you know, that's one outreach, but is there any other sort of outreaches to the vocational slash high schools that you guys yeah, are doing? Um, 
one of the things that we will be doing this year at the Science and Engineering Festival is turning over curriculum to train people for entry level AV positions, CTS type positions down the road um, at different vocational schools that participate in the event. But beyond that, um, ICIF, um, Infocom's foundation, mm. has a grant program. It was new this past year. We're starting the cycle of applications are due February 29th. Um, and, I, and, I've, and I've already gotten some in, which is great. Well, can you explain a little but bit more about that? The grant program yeah. is a great opportunity for AB industry um, the AV industry, whether it be um, any Infocom member, whether it be um, an integrator or an institution, what they do is they sponsor a student for a $2,000 scholarship um, and an internship. Hmm. And the Infocom Foundation matches that $2,000 scholarship, um, makes it payable to the institution. And then we um, give a lot of AV training to those people. Then so those young people are coming up in the industry, but they also have the practical experience at an integration yeah. firm. And then beyond that, um, what happens is we've created a mentorship program for the grant sponsors, teaching them how to work with interns, because not a lot of people have experience with yeah. that in our industry. How to be and both so gentle and firm all at the same time. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and also to make sure that, you know, these people are really getting the training that they need to make a decision is this right for them so it, it really works well all the way um, we had a few companies participate um all over the world we had a few out of hong kong i know in atlanta we had and um up in chicago area chicago land and we're hoping that a lot more people will participate yeah. um, next time around um but it's a really great program um the other thing that we're doing is you know doing outreach to colleges and universities who might want to offer um AV curriculum and um we'll probably be announcing some pilot programs soon oh, very um, cool. and so these are just some of the efforts of the icif the um foundation that infocom runs and the primary um, purpose of that group is workforce development. So what can we do to bring young people into yeah. the industry? Because I know once you're hooked, you're hooked. I mean, I know that uh, not on the same level, but I go into my kid's school and I talk a little bit about audio engineering with them and how you do it and why is math important? Ah, we'll figure this out. Oh, see, we do the delay thing. Like the big enough classroom to do a delay and go, what's the math? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all decimal, so that's what they're doing in about fifth or sixth grade. So uh, it's, it's really cool. And once they're hooked, they go, oh my God, that's what it's for. Right. And they go home and tell mom and dad, like, oh my God, I know how to do audio. Yeah, we, we so. taught kids how to blow up speakers. We, 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 we I talk. like you. See, you're, you're like the Mythbusters of AV. I like yeah. this. When you, know, when you put in, like, say, uh, a 70-volt amp into a regular 8-ohm speaker. <laughs> yeah, we, we, another thing we did was we taught um, these students how to use um, AV best practices and standards to put together the ultimate video game setup. Oh, yes, so yes. That, that's been really fun because um, they're learning about viewing angles, they're learning about sight lines, and it's it really was a great program. And it also allowed Infocom staff, who sometimes aren't necessarily front and center, mm -hmm. to come into the limelight and be out front as instructors, people who design a lot of our curriculum. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of fun, too. But when you have five you know, close to 500,000 people running at you, yeah, wanting yeah, yeah. to learn more, <laughs> you know, you got to be fast. So we'll be planning new things for this year as well. I, I always envisioned that there would be an Infocom sort of heath kit. You know, build, blow up your own uh, speaker. Blow up your own speaker, <laughs> kit included. Yeah. You know, we, we always like, you know, have these debates like, what should we do? Yeah. What should we do with the kids? Because it's always so much fun, you know, do we teach them Raspberry Pi? Like, what, what, what do we do? Right, right, so, right. Anyway, we're, we're really having a good time with it. Oh, cool. You had a question. I interrupted Actually, you twice. Um, Betsy, because I know this is actually related to uh, our, with my university. We have a number of uh, university students going to CCW, and it's also this year uh, Infocom is having uh, Infocom Connect Connections, uh, which is hosted in uh, the Javits Center. Yes, November 11th and 12th. Yeah, so it's one of those things where um, I see I see some of this stuff, and once again, I know we talked about the educational race, but um, CCW does tend to get like more of the broadcast folks involved. But at the same time, um, in our case, a lot of our communication students are going to be attending. And so more than likely they'll end up with us going, hey, you should really kind of keep, keep following to the back because I think CCW is in the front and then you guys are more towards the, the back and everything. But it's 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 good just because um, I know, uh, I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, a couple, uh, about a year or so ago, we also had uh, Infocom Connections that was going to be held in Philadelphia. That, 
Yeah, we had to reschedule it, but we did have one in San Jose. Oh, okay. So this one um, in March. So this is the East Coast version for this year in New York. Um, registration's going really well. Um, and we're hoping, obviously, to get more. We have plenty of free passes if people need codes, you know, come to the website. We'd love to see students there. We'd love to see end users there. Um, I was at the Simcoe event in New York last week, and I was really amazed by the high level of awareness of their attendees in the event and how many, many people said, oh, I want to bring my whole IT department with me yeah, for this and, to and, see and everything. that's the thing. Like, in our case, we're bringing uh, pretty much our entire broadcast uh, support division. And I'm going along as well. But I also did tell the folks, I said, guys, you really should look at this because they are also, you guys are also hosting classes during the same time, time frame too. As well. And uh, there is some fun stuff because I did tell some of the guys, there is some event management um, uh, courses, I believe, or um, live event uh, management that's yeah. going to be going on. And, and, some great, and there are some great keynotes as well. Yeah, so, so there's, some good, there's some good crossover. And so, um, like I said, CCW, it is one of those things that like our students are, are going towards and I'm happy to see that you know, info found is uh, sharing the space with them. No, it, it's been a great opportunity to work side by side with NAB and We'll see what that comes to the event, and then we'll also be opening registration soon for the second edition of Important Connection San Jose, which will be in March again. So. Well, I, I want to let you go. You've been gracious enough Thank to, you to come much. here, and fly Thank in, so. just get off your Uber and uh, come flying in. But uh, where can folks find out more about the stuff you just mentioned and all that uh, um, the classes? Please go to infocom.org. If you're looking for information on the grant program, infocom.org slash ICIF. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're interested in connections, infocom.org slash connections. Cool. Betsy, thank you so much. Thank Good you, to Brad. see you. Thanks. Look forward to seeing you at one of the shows. Thank you. All right. Take care. Yeah. That's, that's his. That's not mine. This is mine. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I handed it to you. No, yeah, I know it was. Okay. We're playing, yeah. We're playing, uh, we're playing uh, rotation. Okay. Sure. All right. Dan? Hi, hey, I'm Farrakhan. George Tucker. Hey, George. Hello, Don. Nice to meet you, Yeah, we're nice from Baby Nation. Uh, so you were, uh, you're part of the larger corporation, LeGrand, right? We, we all are. Yeah, we all are. Yes, we all are. Yes, I, I've been with LeGrand for All right, like, right step years. a little closer if you would. Okay. Um, just so they can hear you. you got a voice. But, okay. Um, well, talk to us more about sort of Middle Atlantic's place in that, that, that sort of ecosystem that you guys have. Okay. There's furniture, there's cables, there's this stuff. Talk to me about that a little bit. So um, the way to think about it is I, I was actually had a business development role in LeGrand prior to Mid-Atlantic. My, my goal was, and I came from the residential side, the CDA world, mm. and my goal was to figure out what should our strategy be for LeGrand to be in the commercial AV market. Mm -hmm. and so we spent a lot of time looking at companies and strategy and which products and whatever. And obviously, Mid-Atlantic was a great acquisition and great fit. And what, what made LeGrand interested in Mid-Atlantic was, one, you know, the, the presence that Mid-Atlantic has and market share it has in a very foundational uh, infrastructure kind of a product, and really became the base of how do we build a commercial AV division focused on, you know, infrastructure kind of products. So it's not just racks and cabinets. Right. You know, think of everything that these systems are built on, you know, whether it's furniture, whether it's power, these types of things and, and the question is how do we then expand it into other categories all right well we're standing at you can't really see it but one of your your furnitures talk to me a little bit about that integration so we've got the racks we've got the power we've got the tables but these these pieces of furniture they're really av systems yes so i mean the, way, the easiest way to think about it is the, the electronics are moving and and how systems are being done are changing and so we're trying to just follow wherever the systems are going and so whether it's credenzas or whether it's lecterns mm -hmm. or whether it's consoles, you know, the equipment's being put in different places for different applications. And Middle Atlantic is really good at how do we support and mount equipment mm -hmm. uh, and provide it for the right, uh, you know, for the right application. Right. Yeah. It's beyond desks with little cubbies for, for, uh, yeah. for cables. I mean, you guys actually ship a system, right? I mean, if I order a system, I get a racked set of gear yes. ready to go. Yep. 
So what do I supply? So I'm going to get like a UPS and some cables rewired. rewired. Well, we're not doing the pre-wiring. Okay. Yeah, but, but we are providing, again, all the foundational products. And, and you know, those who want us to assemble it for them, we'll put it together. Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, again, it could be for a piece of furniture. We're actually sending some of it in pieces because sometimes they want the foundational piece, like for the credenza. They want right. the rack first because they're going to integrate that in their shop. And then later they're going to come back and put the furniture, right. you know, finishing kit. It so. In fact, uh, actually, that's a fun thing in, in that uh, we're having a, an installation go on at uh, our campus over at William Patterson, and there's about I want to say six or six or eight of uh, these credenzas going in. Oh, great! And the thing that we really got a kick out of it was the fact that you guys actually uh, integrated um, proper ventilation mm -hmm. systems because uh, a lot of times we've had it where uh, there's been an install and you go, oh yeah, no, let's we'll uh, cut some holes in and everything, and it's. It, it's it's okay, but there's no you know there's right. no exhaust or anything like that. Whereas with the uh, C fives and everything, it's nice. It's just it's it's built in, and uh, I know maybe a former integrator is really nice in the fact that uh, the wood, needs to say the wood sides and everything, uh, can be put on at a later date, so you can get it. Right. You can actually get it on the site, and uh, you know you can have all the rack rack racking done, and uh, you don't have to worry about you know the, the top of the scratch. Right? Or scrap knuckles. Yeah. Try to wire it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, as I say, yeah, you guys, I, I do have to give you guys credit. The, the C5 is a very nicely, very nicely designed. Well, thank you. And it's really customer feedback that gets us through it. And, and, and think about, you know, what the integrators were telling us and the challenge that they have is they're doing the work, whether it's a corporate client or a university or wherever, they're doing the work for them. And then sometimes they're being given a piece of furniture and they say, we need you to use this credenza from whatever furniture manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And then they have to figure, and, and you know, it's a joke we said. Well, what they do is they take this beautiful piece of fine furniture, yep. and they get their drill out, and they got to put holes in it for the cables into it. They got to figure out. Well, I, I mean, we've had to get a sawzall. We had to get a sawzall. Saw 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 <laughs> right, right, right. So you know, we, and, and the funny part of it is that then they'll tell them so they'll 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 put the sole uh, and and the fans in and blowing to the back of it and then they put it up against the wall and yeah. no air yeah. <laughs> and then, we, then we got ourselves a handy dandy homemade confection oven that's right so we went you know we put a lot of thought into it in terms of one how to make it work for the integrator so that we really protect the equipment and, it, and it's a good reliable system but the thing we've done more recently is we took our line and redeveloped it because one of the things we heard was, well, that's nice, but that doesn't look like the furniture we want to put in. Mm. And so we actually went and did a redesign, and we brought in more fine finishes, uh, HPL finishes and veneer finishes, and now we have a piece of furniture that looks like fine furniture so that the innovators can take it to the architects and designers so that they can say, okay, yeah. we can match what you want, that's and we'll, we'll match. That will match, uh, you know, any of the finishes. That yeah. match. Well, you, so, we, he laughs because Bill was on a rant on uh, not just a few minutes ago, but on a show, one of our other shows, EdTech, about the fight with architects and the furniture they want and the, and the inability of it to match with AV. Yeah, <laughs> that's good because just going back that we we actually had that the exact scenario, and we simply told them, well, what do you guys, you know, what's going to make you happy? And they said, well, do they provide Wilson art? And I went, let me check, let me go check, and right within the menu, yep, yep. here you go. They suddenly, they suddenly said, "Good choice. We like this. All right, we are happy." We're good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, th then there's the cable component. You guys yep. have C2G. Yep. Um, they make all sorts of cable, right? I mean, for anything and everything. Yep. Uh, and that's another. Now that's there, there's a slightly different model, right? I mean, uh, Middle Atlantic, so somewhat of a direct sale, and then. So so How we, does, do, we do both. Yeah. We sell much of it direct to dealers, but we also sell through distribution. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Cables to Go was a, was a great acquisition for Legrand. Pieces of it went with our Datacom division because they sell to the to the um, Datacom world and the IT world. And then pieces of it fit more with the AV part of it. So that part came with Middle Atlantic. And again, it's a foundational product, something you need in every every system. We're really just trying to provide more value to our dealers by having more of the components for them and making it easier for them. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things we have heard is like response to customer inquiry, customer uh, uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. It's something you guys have been really big on, and it's something that's you know, there's a few companies that do it really well. A lot of them try, but you guys have done it really well. And it sounds like you've listened to what they said you needed. The company was really built on that. Yeah. Uh, listening to customers, having them tell us, you know, you could do this a little bit differently, and here's something that would really help me. Right. Go build new products based on it. And over time, over 30 years, 
essentially we, we've, we've gone from a manufacturer that built just a few accessories to one that has 60 series of racks and cabinets. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it's a foundational piece for us. Very it's a very important. interesting thing because there's a timeline downstairs in the main lobby. Yeah. And I hadn't realized, and the first thought I had, this is a new old company. I had, I, in my world, I, it's always been there. Yeah. I've been in the industry only about 25 years, so yeah. me, Middle Atlantic has always been there. Right. And I realized like 84, 85, I think it started. It was uh, 1979. 79, okay. Yeah. The one that caught me was 1985, the year I graduated from high school, 18 employees. Yeah. I was like, wow. I did. I, I think it was like 70 years right. old or something yeah. <laughs> like that, but yeah. I'm not going to tell you how old I was at the time. Yeah, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to remember, I am the promotion, I don't want to hear it, okay? Yeah. I'm yeah. right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, very cool. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'll oh, let you get welcome. back to hobnobbing with everybody and uh, okay. pressing the flash. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. It. yeah, good to see you. It's it's something of a remarkable that when they were showing, again, the racks being built, you know, I build racks all day in my live events industry. We have these, I have more middle Atlantic racks than I care to really admit. Um, but when we build them for installations and stuff like that, you know, there is that necessary evil of trying to figure out how the cables go where they go and this yeah. was a really good set of courses that they had about that see now i'm kicking myself but once again i was uh i, I was uh, taking care of things that needed due diligence but um, <laughs> the, you know the only thing i am kind of curious of and i don't know if you, you asked dan this or anything but it's the, <clears throat> since, since the, that they're part of legrand which is you know they have wire mold and everything mm -hmm. i'm more surprised you haven't seen like say uh some flip through devices or kind of some flip tops or anything that would say integrate, integrate with some of the racks like, so well i know they work with the furniture and i know that they've had that with the furniture that rolls around some of them are mobile huddle space type okay. stuff um and you know you just the whole thing just lifts and moves and then there's a plug-in that they provide with it yeah <clears throat> but, that is one thing i have seen uh wire mold uh, take up is um they, they originally went from going oh yeah here's some single space stuff to now they have their uh, evolution series which uh from a poster perspective i know everyone just goes oh it's a six or eight inch cord roll it's like yeah but you don't understand we can actually fit like you know two gang plates now like you're you know you're, yeah. as you say various manufacturers make their hd based t plates but yeah. they can actually fit in now yeah and that's that's a big deal because before it's oh here we'll, we'll go and make a pass-through game and then you know try to run it up the leg and now it's just no you hear you can do everything just mm. flip open the flip open the top and there you go there you go and yeah, it's easy oh uh, we have another guest to join us yep so andrew. What? Hey, andrew. Andrew. andrew all right andrew mitchell from avi spl nice to meet you what's yes. your name i'm george tucker and this is bill o'donnell we're from nice uh, avi nation yeah. Meet you. All right, so you're here at Mid Atlantic, taking yes, a, you're here for the whole day for the webinar uh, for I the course. Was. So, blessed. did you guys do anything else for AV Month? Where would you would you um, as well, a company? AVI SPL? Uh, we participate in AV Month to the fullest extent. Our HR department down in Tampa loves to send out weekly trivia questions, and we do different things every week. This week it was kind of like dress up week. So it's like sending a picture of you with your coolest fake mustache or real mustache if you have one. <laughs> and then one day it was wear a pink day and you had the best pink outfit. And, you know, just kind of get, get the team involved and, and aware. And, you know, there's other things. They, they offer uh, you know, training and prizes and you know, events like this they, they encourage us to come out to. So I would say they're heavily involved in maybe. Yeah, and it does, it does, it does in fact, give a little bit more oomph. Like, hey, what we do is actually pretty cool. We tend to forget because we're grinding, you know, getting the details, getting the drawing, getting the spec. Well, I mean, I would say, especially in this region of the country, right. that holds true <laughs> because, you know, you figure I got work, I got tons of stuff to do, meet this deadline and that. And something like this comes along, you're like, you know what? I need a day to go out and really get make myself better, mm. have a little fun in the process, uh, have, a, have a couple cold brews. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, libation. Get to, get to know uh, your... your your co-workers and your colleagues and, and what's going on yeah so you took uh, there were four classes today or five mm -hmm. there was one about byod about making a smart rack uh, about yes. cable length stuff uh right. which one did you find like the most informative like anything oh, man, done I didn't by know joe that. was fantastic well there's class. that yes okay i mean uh, <laughs> he surely crams a great amount of information into one hour and you know nowhere else i haven't i've never had an instructor really kind of captivate you on what what's a really mundane topic or something that's not really interesting otherwise he uh he pulls he pulls you in and he keeps you there uh so you know a lot of things i learned from him uh, 
I'm, I'm going to take down the road and and apply it to any any new design I'm doing. Right. Was, there, was there a uh, interesting little nugget of knowledge that you were able to get? Uh, like one little just like. Oh, I mean, he he had come to our office prior to discuss USB C and USB 3.1 and the emergence of that. Um, but I really found interesting the things that you don't really know about HDMI and things that manufacturers won't really tell you. You've got to find yourself how much information is crammed under that one little cable. And uh, it's it's rather incredible. And, you know, it's it just gives me more homework to do. And I think that's that's the best part about it. When you can come out of a presentation and and feel like you need to learn more. Yeah. I think that's that's the best kind of presentation or class you can go to. Yeah. So, I mean, with the cable, they covered what the keys and uh, the wire gauge and the certification of the cables. and Oh, yeah. But the certification of the cables. And- not even that. It's it's yeah. It's a lot of things that you didn't know, like uh, color chroma ratios, right. things that manufacturers they're not going to advertise most of the time. Most of them don't even know any better. They'll just say, yeah, this should work about twenty feet, or mm-hmm. it'll work to this distance, or with this application at this resolution. <laughs> they won't tell you the, the gritty details like that. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting. I have a, a lot of homework to do. I'll say yeah. That. I mean, do you guys actually run HDMI cables that you have to terminate? I mean, I know that's the Never, newest thing. No. Yeah, see, typically it's all HD base T, or yeah. you know, we're running a thirty foot cable in the wall. That's about right. it. Never are we terminating HDMI. And that's I don't even who's who do you know anyone terminating I, I, HDMI? They sell the cables. I mean, you wow. see the connectors everywhere, and I was always like, why? If it's like an optical conversion, maybe. Yeah, that's one of those things I would look at. Hey, okay, I've got like a solder gun and a really steady hand. Well, no, it wasn't solder. It's the whole clip on thing. Oh, it's the, the like you know one of those little punch crunch. Uh, Guys, so but I'd just, I'd yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Be done. it's it's cheaper. Yes, it's true. It is much cheaper. Yes, go category cable. Even the high end category cable is much cheaper to pull. And pre made HDMI. Yeah. Pull it through the wall, you're done. Labor labor on on crimping or soldering something like that is way more than you're going to spend on a cable. The labor around here is. No, yeah, well, welcome to the Northeast. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the New York metro area. It ain't Kansas. Yeah, as we know. Or it ain't St. Louis, Tim. <clears throat> Sorry. Our friend Tim Albright. I don't think we're in found, Kansas anymore. Uh, I don't think we are in Kansas anymore. Well, I mean, for those who don't know who AVISPL is, I perish the thought, but can you tell us just a little bit more about you guys, what you guys do, where you're out of? Well, AVISPL is based out of uh, Tampa. Um, and to know those in the know in the industry, they're... They're the power horse. Mm-hmm. Um, we're currently at least two times larger than our nearest competitor as far as size and uh, profits yearly. And, you know, it's, it's just a, a good culture to be in. You have a lot of support. Uh, if you have a question, um, you can blast just about half your company right then and someone will answer you. Um, just about any question you could ever have about anything. If you have a problem controlling a product in the field, if you have a design question, someone's probably going to help you hmm. and you know, that's it's one of the benefits of being part of such a large company and everyone's very supportive and forward thinking trying to help each other get the job done you know there are hurdles as being part of a large company anything you do goes through 10 layers of approval yeah. and yeah. you got to take it up the chain and it's slower but you know with any company there's you have to talk to someone who's a level three well what level am i you're a level two uh. Once again, years of years of working for Lockheed, you know, I know that I know that pain well. Oh yeah. How long have you been there? Uh, about three years. Ah, okay. And you've been that was you've been in the AV business before that, obviously. Yeah, came from a, a small mom and pop style operation of about four people, mm. and going to a company of about three thousand, I would say. Mm. It's a it's a big culture change, but uh, you know, one that I welcomed. I learned a lot being in a smaller operation. You, know, you get thrown in the fire. You kind of have to do everything yourself. <laughs> you, know, you have no choice. You're basically engineer, sales, tech, everything rolled yep. into one. And you got to solve the problem. Here, it's like, like I said, you can reach out at any point to anyone you want. You'll have you'll have a helping hand. You're never alone. Yeah. No. And yeah, it's it's positive in the fact that you've always got the support network negative in the fact that maybe it doesn't encourage everyone on the same learning scale. Right. But not everyone's meant to learn that way. And you know, it's, it's a good environment. For well, if guys are watching, they want to know more about your company. Where's, what's the website? ABISPL.com. Easy to remember. Uh, Andrew Mitchell, thank you very much for having some time with us. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Get a beer. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jay. Come on in. Come on in. What? Yes, That's quite right. Sam? Jay? 
Hey, Donald. Hey, Joe. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. How are you? All nice. right. So you put. I was in some of the last bit of your class. Okay. Um, you were covering. Yeah. Recap for us a little bit. Here's your microphone right there. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, so what I was covering in the class is um, the system approach. Talking mm -hmm. about how a rack is just not a rack anymore. Right. You want to have thermal management. You want to have cable management. You want to have also structural things. You know, knowing that how the shelf works, how to cooling work. So that was kind of what we went through. And uh, Mid Atlantic has always taken that approach from day one of when we did rides. So it's one of the advantages I think that we have. So that's kind of what that whole course was about. Yeah, and, and one of the things you covered was uh, the, the sort of heat buildup mm -hmm. and the fans yeah. and the mistake. I mean, I've seen it it's, more times than I care to remember. And sometimes in my own stuff going, oh, yeah, okay. I never even thought about it that way. Yeah. But yes, I guess that's I should cover that up because the air, yeah, okay, airflow. Yeah, a fan, a fan will find its <laughs> easiest way to pull air. That's what a yeah. fan's going to do. So it may not always be the way you here, want, though. <laughs> a fan here, it's going to do your circulation. So. Right. Uh, I think, as you call it, a nice convection oven. Yeah, convection oven. It, it was the easy bake oven version yes. of. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much, sir. I like this party. Cheers. Happy, 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 happy month. <laughs> happy month. month. Yes. That's right. Month is almost ended, huh? Remember? So, so great they had to make it 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jay, I have a question for you. Is, um, for me, it's at least a recent, uh, recent thing that we've started using. It's uh, some of the lever latch or the uh, lever lock. Lever lock. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Um, can you just tell us a little bit? Yeah. About so, what, what that is, is um, that started with the BGR series we did about four years ago. Um, what it was was we were finding back then all the little devices, whether it be splitters and <clears throat> little amplifiers, or your little power supplies. Power supplies. Um, typically, what was happening is that was all being put on a shelf, taking up rack space. So when we did the BGR, we went a little bit wider. Standard AV racks are about 22 inches wide. Mm. We went to a 23. We gave a little more room. I'd like Lisa was talking in her presentation about no man's land. Right. The distance between the side of the rack and the rack rail. So it gave you a little bit more room, and that's where the BGR became a uh, lever lock became and we just wanted a way to click it take it out service do what you need to do and then put it back in so answer a question i know there's one of the debates it's not raging a bit but it's one of the base guys have when they build racks okay sides or no sides so it all depends um sides are definitely useful for thermal management mm -hmm. so um the other thing is security um if you don't want things to go in we, we're seeing now is with ganging rack, racks that gang, so typically racks that have removable sides are for ganging. So mm -hmm. multiple, multi bag, two, two racks, three racks, four racks. We're seeing how some of the equipment, the way it, when it breeds, the way it cools. What we're doing actually, we're putting side piles in between gang racks. Mm -hmm. So it's what it's doing is it's taking that air, and making sure it either goes right out the back, mm -hmm. not blowing into the, the other side. So I mean, an open rack is great for convection. Um, but typical, if you know, a fully condensed rack, it's got a lot of heat coming through. So you want to you want to control that heat. So. I think it's akin to the um, the argument about pickup trucks. It may be yeah. a little obtuse, but there's a lot of guys who think if they put their tail of the pickup truck down, they're getting gas. better efficiency because it's letting air flow. But what you find out is the car and the truck manufacturers have actually designed into that that it's more efficient with the tail closed, Correct. with the tailgate <laughs> closed. So wow, you, well, you would think the logic is that the wind would blow around inside of it and cause some kind of downward pressure or some back pressure, but no. So you got aftermarket people that are making a good living off a netted, yeah, a, a netted uh, tailgate that's supposed to do that. Yeah, right? which doesn't really do it. It's actually worse for them, but it's a um, nice, it's a nice so little add-on. Again, the sides or no <laughs> sides, it all depends. You know, yeah. Solid-sided rack, we have both. You know, it's 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 up to really the application where it's going to go, how it's going to be used, that kind of thing is, is really. So there is no wrong or right. Yeah. Answer. Well, I mean, I've heard the argument like from IT guys that they want no sides because they have a lot of air conditioning in their sort of data rooms, and that's that's the advantage. And there's guys who argue, well, no, you want the sides because we keep the air in. Yeah. So and evacuate the air out, but that's. Yeah, when you're talking about a data center, yeah, you're talking about ninety percent of the equipment in that rack is going to breathe from front to back. Mm. So kind of what you know, almost what you'll see there is a lot of high hot aisle, cold aisle. Yeah. Face front of the rack, front of the rack like this, cold aisle in the front. Air goes this way. Back of the rack, back of the rack, heat comes out. So, but what you want to make sure is that air is going from front to back, and that's where we're seeing we have a new series, the SNE, which is a security network enclosure. Okay. Which has fits in a into a um, uh, data center quite well. Has a flush mount side. Panel, so it allows you to gang with side panels on it, like I talked about before. So. Oh, see, and that's the thing. Like I can tell, like um, 
not only from an IT perspective, but if um, folks are doing, like, say, government installations or uh, DOD stuff, they are very big about their about, yeah. uh, about uh, um, security. security and yeah. right. At that point, you're almost going to what they call a co-location rack. See that, like, where a certain company may only need a third of the rack? Another company has this. So you're renting rack space is what you're doing. Hmm. So. That's what that's a true um, what they call a colo rack, okay. but you know in the data side you got Cisco switches pulling from the front and blowing to the side. Yeah, you got gang racks that like we were talking a little bit about in the in the, um, in, in the presentation. Is that air? You don't want that air going into the next rack cooking. Oh yeah. So now you have that side panel, and basically there's a diverter that's that we have available, and a lot of other manufacturers do too. That's on an angle. Hmm. Allows that air to come out and it shoots it out the back. Continue, angle of incidence, angle of reflection. Front, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that front to rear. I'm, I'm now truly regretting that I wasn't in class today. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, they, she, Becky snuck me in. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. You know, I got things. That, okay. I, like, I was like, I was supposed to tweet. I was supposed to take pictures. I'm like, no, I'm going. I'm, okay, I'm listening. Um, one of the things they did that. mention too, and this is very esoteric, but if you know me, I'm esoteric. Um, okay. Why, why are, um, Pieces, yep. uh, the, the rack rails, cable management. cable management rails, round versus square. Why do we have different ones? And is so, there a real purpose other than somebody has a preference? It's preference. Okay. So we started with one. Well, you would think, you're laughing at me, but you would think that no, round no, would I mean know, something. I, I, no, it, it, then there's the flat one with the laces for you to put the Velcro well, no, through, but. There's, yeah. the, there's the flat straight one, there's the flat, flat bent, round. Yeah. And, then, and then there's the square. And oh, believe me, I know where you're going. Yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, we always joke about that here is that we can add another type of laser bar. And none of the other laser bars sales will suffer. It's that one guy that uses it. And yeah, I, I could talk to four different people and use four different lace bars. And I mean, passionately it, have to have that lace bar. That's the one it's, I it's use. What flavor of water do you like? Correct. It's. I was hoping there was some ancient history, you know, like, well, back in the 1920s when they were first doing phones, they needed. I was hoping, but nah, I guess not. Yeah. No. Oh, the only history no. we had was when they you know, George Westerhoff. Yeah. First. <laughs> well, you know, they might be funny. That might be part of it. I mean. <laughs> Unless it was a stamping thing, I guess, yeah. The old blacksmith making yeah, rack rails. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, I'm glad uh, yeah. this is a great event. I'm glad all you guys came up. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank we'll let you get back to some of the good food. I can still smell the thing over. Yeah, nice thank you very guys. much. Thank you, sir. Take care. All right, and those right. webinars will be online, as Becky okay. said earlier, uh, from his great stuff. So you should be able to look those up. I, I was um, saying, that, was, uh, that was fun. I definitely, uh, that's actually just fun just to, just to hear some of the, the, yeah. uh, the reasons behind this. It's, once again, they're, they're right. Wait, no, the technology behind these things is actually very interesting. Come on right in, Joe. How are you doing? Good to see you, sir. How are you? Pleasure's all mine. This is Bill O'Donnell. How are you doing, Bill? This is the world. Hello, Hello world. world. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Joe. Uh, what can I tell you? All right, you're in Aries, so, you like long walks on the beach? Not so much. <laughs> I like long walks on the beach from running wire. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, I was, I, I, was, I was born on the South Shore of Massachusetts, relocated to Cincinnati, Ohio in 1984. I've been doing this since I got out of the military in 1984. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you with absolute sense of honesty, I've never even thought about doing anything other than AV. This is just kind of, right? If I don't do this, a lot of people don't realize this, I'm pretty well known in the fly fishing industry. Oh. Yes, I've written books on fly fishing. I've done shows oh, really? on fly fishing. I'll be right back here in New Jersey for a fly fishing show. Come, uh, I think it's in January where I come out and I do a Is little bit a of fly, fly fishing. Time. Competition? Like a big one around yeah, here? Yeah, there's not so much competition, but there are a lot of shows where we talk about it. And that's sort of my alter ego is you know getting out on the water and relaxing and, mm. and being uh, Mr. Nature. But the rest of my time is this the gear, the stuff, right? Because one of the things I found out, and this is really something I found out when I was in high school, mm. um, when I first heard an AV, well, it wasn't V, it was just A, yeah. when I heard a system owned by an English teacher that consisted of uh, a 10-inch Pioneer reel-to-reel -reel deck driving whatever kind of amplifier you had in a pair of AR3s, and I had never heard anything like that. I sat back and I thought, oh my God, it was a life-changing mm. moment. That's it. I want to do that. Um, that's what I've pursued ever since. Well, if anyone knows, if those who don't know, your webinars are like rock star events. The comments that were on social media about the webinar going on and your ability to translate those concepts into that's something really that's fun. exciting. Uh, I was that I got to sit only, unfortunately, into the last bit of yours. But even that was just there's a presentation, a methodology that was just really riveting. Like you go, aha, I got it, and I'm going to stay awake for it. And it's not like. Well, the uh, widget goes to the who's he, what's it? And, uh, I'll, I'll, you know. I'll, I'll tell you why that's so. There's, 
I don't think I'm doing anything special or unique. But here's what I'm doing. First of all, my training is me learning. Mm. You're learning with me. This is how I do this. So I don't, I don't, I didn't wake up one morning and go, well, I'm going to be an expert on USB. I don't know. I'm not an expert on USB. What I'm an expert on is being curious. Mm. So I started looking at this and I said, wow, somebody's got to talk about this. Somebody's got to bring this message out because we're seeing more and more of this. So as I learned about it, I developed a training because I think, well, if I tell you about it, mm -hmm. then I have to be accurate. And therefore, I'm doing work. So if you really want to be a trainer, if you want to do this, if you want to, if you want to be a teacher in any discipline, be a learner. Mm. Right? Be devoted to that. So... You know, thanks. I'm glad everybody thinks that the webinars are fun or that the seminars are fun. But trust me when I tell you, I'm having more fun than the audience. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's a good thing. I mean, having to do this and be, you know, upfront and present, it's, it's like you said, it's not a difficult task, but it's also something you have to keep reminding yourself about. How do you make sure that when you're talking about something technical, that those different levels of understanding that you have in the room all come together by the end of your statement. How, how do you go through that process of saying, I'm gonna teach you all this, and those who know are gonna get a little bit more out of it, but those who don't know are gonna get right up there. And, and I guess part of it comes down to the three tenets of teaching. Mm -hmm. Tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them, tell them you told them. So always <laughs> summarize in segments, make it right. bite size, right? My brain can't handle all this stuff, so let's make this all bite size. And then the other part of it is, once again, you're seeing me learning. So before, for instance, if I'm doing a presentation on BYOD, um, I had to learn what's the difference between a system that's operating on apps and a system that's operating on the network and a system that's not, right? So I had to break that down into segments for me to learn about it. Okay. And I think that that's really what helps us to, to, you know, what helps to make it a little bit easier is you're, you're seeing the method that I've used to learn. You're seeing the bites that I took, and I'm simply sharing that meal. Mm. And I think that what it ends up with is because I'm passionately curious about these things, that the folks that have been doing this for a long time, that have some engineering background, that are looking to get a little bit deeper, generally you're going to ask me a question that's going to provoke a, 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 a much more intense answer. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, maybe the folks that are a little bit intimidated by the technology that haven't been in this, they're going to sit back and go, well, this is approachable, this is logical, this is sensible, I can see how we went from A to B to C. And the other thing is not just to tell them you're going to tell them, but the other part of really being um, any kind of a trainer is, you know, once again, that, that passionate curiosity, but also tell a story. And this is the advice. You know, I'm on the Infocom faculty. I was honored by being asked to serve on the Infocom faculty in 2015. And I went to the Infocom trainer trainer, and that was eye-opening. I mean, I've never been the smartest guy in the room i'm sitting in the room with that level of talent i'm like holy smokes i'm ashamed to be in this industry mm. with these people they're so smart but the one piece of advice when they said what can you tell as you do these trainings i said it's got to be a story so in your imagination right. Right. in your imagination you're doing this training and in my mind starting with once upon a time and we're going to tell a story and it has to have a narrative and it has to have a story mm -hmm. arc, and it's going to end up with and they live happily ever after <laughs> yeah and if i can do that well then i can keep your attention for an hour right and it doesn't hurt if you have a five-year-old granddaughter and you practice regularly <laughs> if she can understand it anyone can understand it why not why don't yes. you have a little fun with yeah, it right exactly kids are amazing because they'll tell you right away if you're doing it right mm. um so let me tell you when i'm training i'm doing voices I have characters, and I am, right, I'll right. never reveal who these characters are. Some some of them are people I've met, guys. Hey, okay. <laughs> you know no who name. you are, <laughs> right? But I'm doing these characters. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun to be to be able. So, what can I say? It's uh, it's a privilege to be asked to do this, and it's a responsibility to do it well. And I can say it was a learning experience from this side of it as well. Just just hearing that and Thank knowing you. that that's that's an affirmation of what we try to do all the time. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of fun just to hear you kind of break it down from a training perspective. You know, it's it's because you take on like you said like a topic like USB Type C and everything, and folks go, "That's like, oh, there's so much to, to digest and everything." It's like, well, no. How do you how do you digest a whale? Well, you do it one bite at a time. Yeah. You just, you just break it <laughs> that's it. It's just another meal, mm -hmm. and you'll start by telling the story okay so what are the chapters of my story going to be well they're going to be av they're going to be power they're going to be connectivity they're going to be future development it, 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 yeah it is interesting from you know i never thought of it as a trainer being more of a storyteller but that's really that's really what you're doing that's that's what i i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe that's 
but that's just how it works for me. It's, it, it's, it's usually the best way in which folks really relate to things is when you break it down into, a, into mm. making it more of a story. It's, it's, okay, this is what the subject is. This is how we're going to get from point A to point B, but there are little stops, little divots along the way, and you'll you know, everyone will kind of reassemble. Yeah, and honestly, that's how the trainings are written. And then they're refined by doing them in front of an audience mm -hmm. and building in the questions that I'm being asked and then refining that. And every time I do it, it drives Infocom and Vixie crazy because I'll have the same title. But the presentation I did three years ago, there's no resemblance to the presentation I'm doing mm -hmm. today because it's evolved it's along with yeah. knowledge. But this is how you do it. And, and I think the other thing that you really want to do is look at AV is very technical. There's a lot of stuff, mm. right? So I'm not going to sit back and go, I'm an expert on networking. I'm absolutely not an expert on networking. I can barely know how to turn my computer on. This is not what I do, right? Now, am I an AV guy? Well, yeah. I mean, I've been watching movies for a long time, and I really like that video aspect of it. So find what you're comfortable with. There's a lot of space for us that are in here. Find what you're comfortable with, and then figure out where it's going to go. and Find out how to tell that story. And above all, don't don't be afraid to be wrong because you know here's the one thing that i have found out of, of being an instructor now for uh, 10 years um, i've been doing as a technology evangelist in one form or another um, but in 10 years the one thing that i've found out is my audience will not let me down mm. so if i get the most arcane technical question you can imagine it is perfectly okay for me to say i don't know what do you guys think who in the audience knows? No, uh... somebody knows the answer to this and i just learned something mm -hmm. And you get your audience. In that. that that is something that I think a lot of folks don't don't always understand. It's like, oh, I gotta know the answer. It's like it's okay not to know the answer. It's one of those things where it goes, listen, that is my limit. I'll at least open it up and everything. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. Not at all. No. No. Yeah, we've gotten into a culture at certain times, especially during tighter times, where not knowing was a danger, or at least we perceived it as a danger. But not knowing is the seed of growing. You know what an expert is. X comes from the Latin X as in has been spurt drip under pressure. So we don't need any of these has been drips under pressure trying to tell us everything that they know. If you're here to prove to me that you know more than me, great. You know more than me. I'm willing to seed that right out of the beginning. How about we take a different path? This is fun. By the way, and this is where it really comes together, right? Is AV, this technology, what we're doing right now, is actually helping human communication to evolve. Marshall McLuhan got it right way back in 1964 when he said the medium is the message. Mm. What we do defines how we're going to communicate in the future. I'm part of the experience. So, man, yeah. AV, this, why wouldn't you do this? this? To me, this is about the coolest thing I can imagine doing for a living. And so it, it became... It just became its own reward to be a part of it. And I'm fortunate that I work for Legrand, and we have all of these divisions between Middle Atlantic and Electronics and LDC and Wire Mobile, and all these different things. And they're all sitting back and go, wow, how can we bridge all this AV connectivity across all of these divisions? And they've given me a great new challenge. So I sit back and I'm like, you know, a guy couldn't be luckier than to do every day something, first of all, that's interesting and entertaining for a company that absolutely encourages you to be creative and doesn't punish you if you fail, hmm. right? So if you never failed, you never took a chance, you never learned anything. No. So and we've got so much that we have to learn because this industry, you know, what we're doing right now, I want you to think about this. We're recording to a computer. We're doing this with a very small camera hmm. that this is technology that didn't exist. The microphones kind of hmm. look like what I remember from the right. 1980s, but everything else is foreign. And at one point in time, the idea that we were going to look at this and say a cell phone, a smartphone, this is an AV component, wasn't even yeah. on our discussion. So all of these things are evolving as we're going forward, and we're about to take that next step as an industry where we're moving from, we've already moved from 480p, from analog to digital, we've moved into high def, now we've got to find out where does 4K fit into this? This is the big looming question. Where do I actually use it? Where does it make sense? How do I integrate these devices? Where does it make sense? And the other part of it, the part that I've really adopted as my own, is this, right? Mm -hmm. The desktop experience. How does this fit into what we're doing? Yeah. And to me, it just it, it just became something I wanted to know. About. And that's that's really a big thing mm -hmm. that um, I know when I was uh, younger in my integration days and everything, there was a bit of a, well, if you get stuck, just call tech support, but don't ask me. 
I kind of took it as it, well, I'm going to ask everyone because what's the worst that's going to happen? They say no. And it's it's a, it's really actually, that's actually refreshing to hear that from the manufacturer side saying, no, go ahead, go ask all the questions. We want to, we want to hear this. We want to feel it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice to have. And it, it, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that is actually refreshing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's, that is, that, that is it. One of the things that I really love about these trainings is the questions that are asked that, prompt me to go out and do the next segment and create the next training program that I'm going to put together. That's how the uh, BYOD mm. training that I just did really came together. It was, I kept getting questions about, okay, how does this fit into it? Oh, you know what? Yeah. I have to tell that story, don't I? We, nobody's told that story. Let me go tell that story. That's how USB, tell that story. So the other part of it is, if you're out there listening and you've been to one of my trainings, if you have a question, Tweet, yeah. LinkedIn, ask. Well, uh, to that end, <laughs> where can they reach you? Uh, well, you can follow me on, on Twitter at Joe Cornwall. Mm -hmm. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Joseph Cornwall. You can email me at jcornwall at c2g.com. Mm -hmm. You can find me at virtually all of the Infocom events and a lot of the Bixie events. So wherever you hear somebody making a whole lot of noise about AV and people in the background laughing, mm -hmm. and if there is a good bourbon involved, you can. it's a safe bet. I'm really close to it. Good to know for bribery purposes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm in. I'm in, right? Yeah, well, thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure. I feel taller thank already, you. actually. I have to tell you, I do. <laughs> thank you very much. It's been right. a pleasure joining you. Thank you very much. Guys, thank thanks. You, Joe Cornwall from LeGrand. Thank you very much. I, passion personified. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was awesome. Yes. Just keep it yes. Okay. We are happy to have you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Hello. How's it going, guys? Introduce yourself, Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Needler, and I am the Director of Marketing for Middle Atlantic Products. There you go. So, wonderful turnout. Yeah. Lots of good education going, lots of good stuff for AV Month. What do you guys hope to gain out of this? Well, we hope that this helps our customers understand that we want to be a part of the integration from start to finish. Um, we don't just want to be the provider of a piece of metal, right? Like we want to help contribute education to our industry. We want to further the innovation that's happening in our industry. We want to hear the questions that they have. Um, we just want to contribute. We want to be an active part of what they do every day. So far, have you guys heard uh, any kind of interesting feedback or anything? Or if they've if folks uh, pick something to you guys going, why haven't you done this yet or anything? Or well, anything? we had a couple of great questions around credenzas, which was exciting because I feel like we've got a pretty great solid solution for something I, like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was exciting to hear that they they're definitely feeling pain points that are real and this product already solves those problems. So some of it is around awareness around some of the things that we already offer. Um, but we did send out a survey, so we'll see kind of um, where they stand on the feedback from that. But I think that we are there's lots of great low hanging fruit for us to make improvements for next year. Of how do we divide this into maybe advanced and basic training? Um, how can we collide? people that are just getting started in our industry and people who've been in it for years and get them networking together and get the mind share going. So we're really excited to see what this can take, uh, where this can go from here and what we can do next year. Yeah, and, and on that, talk, tell me more about like the continuing training that Middle Atlantic does. I mean, where we were was a designated training room in this facility. What more do you guys do during the course of the normal year? Well, typically we leverage that space for more internal training than we do customer mm, facing training. Interesting. So we take our manufacturers reps, for example, we've got a couple of them here today when they hire new reps. Um, we have regular curriculum that we deliver to people to make sure they're up to speed on all of our product offerings. So this is one of the first times we've leveraged this space for customer facing training. Hmm, so uh, yeah, so we're definitely hoping we can do this again next year for sure. And we've also talked about how we could leverage our demo bus. So we have a, an actual bus filled with middle atlantic product and we're like road trip so how can we like take this thing and maybe next october we're going around the country for some of this stuff and we like the idea of kind of all roads lead to middle atlantic mm -hmm. because the rack is like the backbone the foundation of the system so there's something just kind of you know sentimental about that concept so it's like yeah, how could we take um that month of october and have all roads lead to middle atlantic so we're going around the country but we end here every year and there's just something kind of sweet about that somehow so. i can see them uh, playing a lot of the johnny, johnny cash song uh, i've been everywhere yeah, i've been everywhere <laughs> man i also had the thought of it's you know craft beers all over the place so we need a 
association with the craft beer festival and middle atlantic there you go i know well it's av people and it drinks i mean it works I like this guy's a marketer over here i know nothing 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 at all uh well cool but it's been a wonderful av month thank you so much for having us in to becky and to all everybody else who showed up uh, it's been a really fun time. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. It's been yeah. great. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It's been an incredible month. We were excited to have the turnout that we had. Yeah. And um, stay tuned for next year's activities. It's going to be big. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll be here as well. Yeah. Well, I want to do that. We're going to sign off for AV Nation from Middle Atlantic. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you need to know more about their products and the stuff that they're doing, it's middleatlantic.com. That's middleatlantic.com. You can find more shows like this on various AV topics at avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv. These shows and more. Again, we thank you for listening, and we look forward to speaking with all of you again very soon. We find my edit point. There you go. It's my wife's computer. There we go. My, my laptop. Got